It's part two of our American France fire engine build. Don't go away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, indeed, today is part two of our American La France fire truck build, and we're going to pick up with the paint. Let's get to it. It seems like it's taken forever to get to this point, but we can finally take the model over to the paint booth start getting ready to make it yellow. I'll give it a final coat of Tamiya Fine Primer and then I'm going to use some Tamiya X8 with a little bit of red added to it to make the paint. As I do with all of my paint jobs, I begin by applying a tack coat, then medium coats, and then some wet coats. As I'm trying to get a really beautiful finish here, I am going to use self-leveling thinner to thin down the paint. The problem is I can't cook this to cure it faster, which means I'm going to have to leave this sit for quite a while to make sure it's fully cured and I don't put a bunch of fingerprints in it. Back in 1987, the paint jobs on our fire trucks was a little more of an orange yellow as opposed to what I'm putting on here, which is more our modern day color. Oh, the hellish nightmare of this kit continues with these horrible wheels and tires. So they look all right and everything, but the wheels and tires never really mate well. And so invariably, you're always going to find some guy with his tires falling off of the wheels, and it just doesn't look right. And I almost went the way I always had before, and was going to have the same problem. And then I finally decided I needed to do something different. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to end up filling the tires with some rolled up paper towels to make sure that the tires maintain some shape to them. And then I'm actually going to put some beads of glue between the tire and the wheels to try and help hold everything together and to keep its shape. With the original yellow paint cured, I can go ahead and start to put on the decals. As I said, to get the white borders, it was just easier for me to make two sets of decals. I laid down the white set, let them dry, then I laid down the other set, and I got this beautiful setup that looks exactly like it should. Once the decals have dried thoroughly, I can now go ahead and lay down some clear coat. For this build, I'm going to be using some urethane clear coat from Bright Vision. I love this stuff. It's easy to work with. It is amazingly shiny and dries really, really hard. Like the paint, I'll apply this in layers, starting with a tack coat, then some medium coats, and then the trick is to lay this down in a very smooth wet coat, but not get any runs in it. If you do it right, this is the kind of result that you can get, this beautiful, beautiful glossy finish. Overall, I would say that the paint and the clear coat is 90% perfect. 
it's that other 10% that I can't live with. And so I'm going to do something that I'm really, really afraid of doing. I've never done it before, at least not on a model. I've done it on a real car. But I'm going to go ahead and color sand this finish. To do that, I'm going to be using some fine grit Tamiya sanding sponges. And I'm going to very, very lightly sand the entire model, focusing on where the decals are to get rid of any ridges and make them just blend right into the body. Am I afraid? Yes. Why? Because I think it looked amazing right out of the clear coat. But I think I can do better, so I'm going to try this and hope I don't have to go back and repaint the entire model. So with the sanding sponges, I'm going to wet sand the entire fire truck. And as I said, I'm going to pay special attention to where the decals are because I'm trying to make sure there's no visible ledge there between the decal and the rest of the clear coat. So I've got to sand and I've got to be really careful that I don't burn right through the clear coat because even though I put like six coats on, it's still very, very thin. Now that everything is sanded and smooth, I need to get the shine back. And to do that, it's going to take a lot of polishing. Now, I will do some polishing with Q-tips, but for the most part, I'm going to be using my rotary tool, a very clean, soft buffing wheel, and to me, a polishing compounds. I'm going to stick with the fine and finish compounds. Starting with the fine, I'll put it on the model, and I'll go ahead and polish everything up with the rotary tool, keeping things moving so it doesn't get too hot, and so I don't burn through the paint on any of the corners or edges. Once the finish is back to where I want it, I can move on, and later I'm going to put something else on to bring even more shine out. So here I am doing more stuff that I really just never do. I'm working with some chrome bare metal foil. And you can see I've already put the chrome strip around the cab, which it wasn't as hard as I thought, but it was still way hard, at least for me, not being a bare metal foil guy. But in the end, I think it came out amazing. I'm also now using bare metal foil to represent the aluminum plates we had on the front half of our fenders. I'm simply wrapping and burnishing and making sure it's trimmed and smooth all the way around. Yes, bare metal foil is an art form and maybe after this project I might take some scrap model kits and practice a lot of different bare metal foil techniques so I'm not as intimidated as I was here. At the end of the day, after all the color sanding and polishing and bare metal foil, I think the cab really is starting to shine. Did I mention that this is the build from hell? If not, allow me to do so now as I move forward and put the window glass in. The window glass that came with the resin cab is really just vacuum formed. It's very thin. It's got a lot of slop on it. And frankly, it was really difficult to work with didn't like it one little bit, still don't like it, but it's all I had and I had to make it work. I'm now going to go ahead and paint the rubber molding around the window openings and frankly it doesn't go great. It's a real pain in the butt. I'm trying to tape it off here and I still end up getting some slop around it. 
and I end up having to do a lot of cleanup afterwards to try and make it look right. Um, I, I, I probably should have done something like used the, the black bare metal foil or something here rather than try and paint it. But in the end, it actually comes out all right. It just was the, the long way around, really. I, I mean, I went the long, long, long way around here. One of the absolute worst parts of this kit is the way the cab and the body unite. Most people building this kit get it wrong and don't have it connected properly. I know how it's done because, I've, like I said, I've built this about a million times. Um, and it's tough enough just using the kit parts. But when I'm using this resin cab, it was virtually impossible. I'm trying not to damage the vehicle. I'm trying to get it done. And it was just a battle royale. And what a headache. Caused me a lot of issues. Ended up having me to have to go back and do a lot of touch-up and repair work. Ugh, such a nightmare. So here's a great look at how these pieces need to go together. You see these little tabs on the engine compartment. And here's the center divider. Well, a lot of people just have it sit either on top of it or below it. And it actually kind of needs to thread in there. And so let me just try and get this all lined up the way it's supposed to be. See how it kind of goes over the first tabs and then under the second tabs? This is the correct way for these two parts to go together. And let me tell you something. It's really, really hard to do. There it is. See? That is exactly how that's supposed to go together. So I painted my trim pieces and diamond plate and stuff like that using all clad, and it came out really nice. But it just didn't have the look I was going for. So I'm using this chrome powder, and basically all you do is just kind of brush it on with a Q-tip and rub it in, polish it up, and you get a really great chrome look. And uh, in the end, I did this on all of the chrome trim and I was really happy with the results. So it's basically all clad and then this and that gave me a really nice consistent even finish on all of my diamond plate and trim. If I were forced to knock this in any way shape or form, the knock would be that it's a little too dark for me. I think it should be lighter. But other than that, I really think it worked out well. So let me show you something about the tires real quick. Here is an original tire. Here is my tire. See the difference? I think it looks a lot more realistic and all I did is I painted the tires with this Tamiya NATO Black. I use it on a lot of tires and a lot of projects and I think it really has a nice look. And look at the chassis right now. Tell me that just is not working wonderfully. So as I said, all the tires are getting the NATO black paint job and again, a little mistake on my part in that I probably should have painted these before putting them on the vehicle. I didn't, so now I have to do it and I have to be careful rather, rather than just being able to hit it up with the paintbrush. But hey, it's going to pay off and the wheels are going to look amazing. If it weren't such a hassle, what I really should do 
for my display is I should get another kit and build an entire second chassis just like this to display next to the finished kit so that you can see all of this stuff underneath it. So here we are, we're about to go ahead and marry the, the body and the chassis together. Uh, it's a big moment and this is really starting to feel like a fire truck. But of course it's not going to just simply go together. We're going to have issues. I'm going to have to trim down some parts on the pump that are a little bit too long. And that's simply because the body has a weird little bow to it in that it's kind of pinched in at the bottom. And so it's a little bit too tight to get it in there without breaking a bunch of stuff. As you see, I'm actually just taking off some of the diamond plate here to give me a little bit more room to work and try and get this together without just breaking everything. And I got to tell you, at this point, the hassles that you run into are magnified because you're trying not to destroy your paint job or other sections. See, I, I broke a wheel off. Now I've got to take that off. You know, and it's just really, really difficult finding a place to grab it, not leave fingerprints, not smear something, not break something. Yeah, it, it's just a hassle. But in the end, I hope it comes out all right. And yes, things are actually going to get worse here, as I realize that somehow the resin kit, the panels are too long for it. So I'm actually going to snap the cab off, set it to the side, because I'm going to have to trim the engine compartment panels to make everything sit properly. So I'm going to take that off, kind of break those parts off, set the cab apart. I'm going to have to trim those down, and I'll put it all together later. But yeah, three steps backwards, one step forward. Ah, oh, damn. So I'm actually going to have to remove about an eighth of an inch off of each of these panels to make this all work out right. Yeah, just these little hidden things. And when you take and add so much to a kit, and there's so many new pieces and parts that were not originally intended to be there, these are the problems you're going to run into. And all you can do is fight through it and find a way to make it work. And yes, I stabbed myself in both thumbs in virtually the same place. What I will do for you guys. So more chrome, more super clean. Now I'm getting pieces ready to go ahead and spray with some all clad. Glue in the air horns together and I'm gonna do some filling on those. I'm gonna get all these mounted up so I can go over and paint and treat them. The funny part is, half the stuff that you're seeing here isn't going to get used. You know, I mentioned earlier how sometimes the chrome is out of place, and unless it's a part that's usually highly polished, uh, I'll avoid using it. Well, I'm actually going to go back, and I'm going to uh, use a kit chrome debumper. I had an extra one, so I'm going to use that. And uh, the mirrors are so bad in this kit that I'm going to make most of the parts of the mirrors myself. So those aren't going to get used. There's a lot of stuff happening here that I'm not going to use. I ordered some styrene sheets of diamond plate and I'm cutting out a bunch of the pieces I need. I'm going to have to make some parts for the steps. I'm going to have to make some panels to go over the rear compartment doors and I'm going to have to make a piece to go behind the grab rail on the rear of the truck. So this stuff is actually closer in scale to what the kit has. It may not be 125th like the rest of the kit but hey it's how the cab should have been in my opinion
Now, like I said, I had some extra parts and it's gonna come into play right here because this panel is not gonna fit properly with the extended part of the back where I did the modification. So I got an extra piece and I cut an end off so that I could put the two together to make this one piece and it worked out great. But if you don't have that, you're gonna have to think of something here. It's gonna be tough, but uh, you know, this worked out having that extra piece. So I was gonna extend the steps and make them longer to fill a giant gap here between the uh, firefighter seats and the steps. I ended up deciding not to do that and I just made some new little walls that I glued in between the firefighter seats and the steps and I just slid them in with some glue, let it dry, and now I'm just painting that to match the rest of the interior. The ladders are one area that always needs a ton of cleanup. And in fact, when I did mine, I painted them and you could still see flash and seam lines. So I ended up having to go back and redo it because it just wasn't working. I'm getting really close on the build and so now it's time to just really hunker down and start doing a lot of the detail work. Here I am putting on door handles, grab rails are going on, air horns will be going on, things like that. You know, all the stuff that's going to make this really just pop. You absolutely need to have some of this tester's glass glue. I use it for my lenses and gluing in my windows. It's essentially like a thin watered down, probably like an Elmer's or something. It dries really clear. And so you can put it behind your lenses, stick them in, they stay, they glue, they dry, and it's clear and it looks fantastic. So make sure you have some of this on hand. I use it a lot. Here's something that I end up not being 100% satisfied with. These are uh, photo etch slam locks for the compartment door handles. And they look amazing. And uh, this is going to work out really great because it's going to allow me to have matching handles up on the, the scratch built compartments and they're going to look very realistic and it's going to be fantastic. What I didn't realize is that these were really, really thick. And so when I glue them onto the compartments, they stand a little too bit proud for me. Uh, they really needed to be countersunk or maybe even drill a hole and put them in the hole or something like that. I, I, I just didn't like the way they sit, but there was just really no way to fix it at this point. So I had no option but to press ahead, get these put onto the compartments. As with any photo etch piece, you cut them off, and then you sand off the little burr, make sure it's all set, and then you glue the part onto the vehicle. Again, out comes my label tape, and I'm gonna use that to help me align the locks and make sure that they're all at the same plane because nothing would look worse than having these things all over the place. So by using this tape, I can go ahead and get a nice straight edge right on the model and make sure that everything is going to line up perfectly.
while each photo etch piece needs to be in the correct exact location the little handle in the photo etch piece should not all be perfectly horizontal that's unrealistic they're never like that look at any fire truck you see that has these kind of handles and some are a little turned to the right some are turned to the left some are horizontal they're all over the place so I actually made sure that mine were a little bit off one way or the other but make sure that the lock itself is all in the same place on the compartment So I'm going to use this yellow masking tape to make five inch hose. Now I tried just folding it and it worked like crap. Okay. It did not work. What I had to eventually do is make a core out of some Pentaflex folders. I cut strips to length and then I wrapped it with this tape and it worked out great. Now here's a piece I tried wrapping it around some fabric and it was too thick and puffy. That didn't work. This was the answer right here. This is the paper insert. It helped fold it up nice. It allows me to fold this hose. It gives me the right thickness. It makes it easy to wrap it up in the tape. This was the perfect way to make five inch hose for these. So if you're gonna look to do five inch hose, cut yourself some strips. I think uh, I went to like eight millimeters in the width on the strips um, maybe I'll put a, a little graphic down below with the exact measurement I used here and then I just cut a piece of tape and I wrap it around this works out fantastic makes great hose so while I'm working on this fire hose let me say this is not my idea. I got so many tips and tricks from the amazing modelers at the Facebook page, Model Fire Apparatus Any Scale, uh, especially these gentlemen, Dave Gusky, Jeffrey Vilchapolsky, and Jody Covey. These guys are amazing modelers, and they have fire truck building down to an art form, and they talked about doing the different kinds of hose with the elastic cord and the tape. In the past, I always just used shoelaces and always ended up hating it. It was better than nothing, but it just never looked right to me. Thanks to these guys, I got so many tips. that This build really would not be possible if it weren't for these guys. The thin piece of board inside the hose here, it really doesn't add a ton of thickness, but it adds just enough to make it look more realistic. But the real thing is, it makes it possible to wrap the tape around and get a consistent thickness and make it nice and smooth and look right. So really, you need to put something in the middle of your hose to get it to come out correctly.
Now I'm getting out some foam core to make a couple things. First of all, I need to make some inserts for the hose bed so I don't have to make an entire hose bed of hose. I'm going to fill up the bottom and the rear of the hose bed with these inserts so that I only need to put on just a couple layers at the top. I'm also going to make some stand-in hose beds so I can make the hose loads off of the model and then just transfer them and slide them into the engine. This is going to work out great and if you don't do it this way you're going to just have nothing but nightmares. You're going to be breaking parts off the model. It's going to be just awful. So here I have my hose bed stand in and I'm folding and gluing the hose and just basically going back and forth and I'm going to make every piece separately so that I keep the tape seams facing down and you don't see them. So I'm going to make a length and then I'm going to make another length and then another length and then another length and I'm going to glue them in separately and then at the top I'll have to do some creative zigzagging to make sure everything works out okay. You might notice we hadn't talked much more about the pump panel and that's for a reason. I found a bunch of amazing things you could get on Shapeways that would really take this build over the top. So I put together an order and uh, I got my parts and just had to wait for them. So now that they're here, I can go ahead and start cleaning all those up and I can finish my pump panel and put it on and really add a lot of detail to this model. I'm here to tell you that stuff from Shapeways is amazing. I got a, a deck gun that I needed. I got 5 inch uh, valves and I got hose couplings and I got uh, double uh, females and Y's and you name it, I got it. And uh, the stuff is, it's like the real thing, but tiny. It's amazing stuff. I was so excited when I got this stuff. Just amazing, amazing stuff. So I've got the pump panel. It's been primed, it's been sanded, and now it's been painted and clear coated. And frankly, it looks amazing. I'm so happy with this. Now, I just need to throw on all the details that are really going to make this thing sing. And to start that, I'm going to put down some decals I made to represent real gauge faces and the plates for all the charging handles. So, again, I printed them out of my HP printer. I've cut them out, and I'm just applying them where they belong. With every step I take with this pump panel, I get more and more excited. It's looking amazing. The decals really work. Now I'm taking some trim rings that I printed in my 3D printer and I'm gluing them down around the decals to give them a little finished edge. Later I'll go back and treat those with some Molotov Chrome, but right now I'm filling inside the trim rings 
with a little bit of the tester's clear window glue. You simply fill the entire area, let it dry, and lo and behold, you've got a lens over your gauge. This works amazing for making realistic gauges. Well, with a few minor exceptions, here is the near complete pump panel. All I still need to do is do a little detail painting on like the 5 inch valve. I need to install the charging handles, but man is it looking good. I've got very, very realistic looking gauges. The pump panel looks like it's supposed to look for engine 14. It really came out good and now that I've got molds of this I can make more if I need to. The final detail for the pump panel is the charging handles. And I used an old set of marker lights. I flipped them over, drilled little holes in them, and put pieces of wire in there, and they made perfect charging handles. So now I'm just using a pin vise to drill tiny holes in the pump panel so I can put the charging handles in place. Okay, so most of the hose has been folded and loaded into the vehicle with the exception of the final few wraps, which I need to do once they're in the vehicle so that I can get them right and make sure they look correct. So I've got that sitting here. I'm very happy with the way it all came out. And now it's just a matter of doing uh, some of the final little bits of detail. I'm using nozzles and the couplings that I got from Shapeways, cleaning the pieces up, making sure the opening at the base is wide enough to take the hose that I'm using, and then I will just uh, kind of fold it, put a little uh, CA glue inside the nozzle and tuck it in there and let it dry. It's going to work out great. With the booster line ready to go, the last thing I want to do is put another coat of paint on it and then put some washes on it to just make it look a little bit more realistic. So I've got it all set up and I'm just kind of running a little bit more paint on it to make sure it looks right. As you can see, the deck gun is mounted, the ladders are in place, and I'm just now finishing up the hose loads. Here's one of my nozzles. It's attached to the hose. It's painted. And it's important when you're putting these nozzles on the hose, think about how they're going to be laying in the bed so that you have the fold in the end of the hose that you need to make to get it into the nozzle. You've got that facing down. That way the hose looks round and it looks correct as it's attached to the nozzle. Otherwise it'll look weird. So you got to think about that in advance. So I'm just going to do a little bit of touch-up paint here and then I'm going to throw this thing into the hose bed and then that hose load will be done. A little bit more detail work. This is an axe from Shapeways and I'm just doing a little bit of paint job on it. And then I'll set that aside to dry and later on I'll mount those to the cab. On my work table in front of me you can see one of my Halligan bars. 
that's going to mount on the rear step just like ours was and uh boy i'll tell you what the shapeway stuff really has made this thing amazing It's starting to look like a fire truck. I really love the paint job, but sadly, I gotta put some chips on it because I do want this to look like a working vehicle. So I'm gonna chip up around some of the high use points, like where the firefighters go in and out of the jump seats and around the hose bed and stuff like that. So I'm just taking a little silver paint and just very, very judiciously putting little dots of it to represent the chips. So now I'm just cleaning up the engine and I'm applying a ceramic coating to the finish to give it a really great shine. And I'm just gonna kind of rub it on with a Q-tip, let it dry, haze up, and then I'll buff it off with a very soft cloth. I have the equipment loaded up top and in the rear compartment, foam jugs, all the fun little accessories. And now I'm just doing a little bit of a pin wash on the rear hose and around some of the hose beds and things to give it a little bit more realism. So we're just about done with this build. It has been a long, long winding road, but I'm feeling very good about things. I've got all the hose that I made outside of the truck, and I've put it into the hose beds, except for the last couple layers that I'm just going to lay down and glue in place with their nozzles and or couplings attached. Again, I can't speak highly enough about the stuff I got from Shapeways. I got two and a half inch couplings, I got five inch couplings, and I got a variety of different uh, assortments of nozzles and appliances to, to use here. And it all just is really pushing this build over the top. Simply put it in place, paint it all up, and it looks amazing. Anyhow, I think we can about call this one done and now we can just sit back and take a really good close look at what we've done. I hope you love it, because I sure do.
Well, there it is. Clark County Fire Department's Engine 14 in all its glory. It was a lot of work, a lot of challenges, super fun, but in the end, I think it came out awesome. I hope you think it too. If you do, please give it a giant thumbs up, click subscribe, and click the notification bell. I really think I deserve it after this build. Until next time, just remember, great works are not performed by strength, but by perseverance. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.